Hey yogis, welcome. I am Laura Lai of Namaste Yoga. Join me for a yin style yoga practice. So join me on your mat. It is a rainy day today in Chicago and we've hit fall. So I thought it would be a good day to kind of do a really slow, kind of cozy, stretchy practice. So this is gonna be yin style. We'll do mostly yin poses, but I am actually gonna throw in a few standing poses as well, just so we can get to our feet and change it up a little bit. But even in those poses, we're gonna do probably some longer holds. And so with yin, theoretically, we're not engaging muscle. We're really just letting gravity do all the work for us and releasing so we can stretch a little deeper. Standing poses, we will have to activate muscle a little bit. So it's a little bit of a hybrid practice, but I hope you enjoy this one. We're gonna start in butterfly. So just bring the soles of the feet together, let the knees go wide and go ahead and fold on down. This is a good place to begin with your ujjayi breathing practice, so slight narrowing of the back of the throat. With yin, we are, I guess, permitted, but actually encouraged to stretch when our muscles are not warm because we're targeting really more of our connective tissue, joints, ligaments, tendons. So if our muscles are warm and we're engaging in stretching those, sometimes the other ligaments and tendons and connective tissue gets sort of, it's not the focus, right? Our body doesn't stretch as deeply there. So just see if you can allow yourself to let go into this pose and let gravity do all the work. So we're not trying to pull, we're not trying to push our knees down or anything like that, but just leaning forward and giving in. Breathe. If anything, in these stretches, the work that you might have to do sometimes is to resist if it, be, if it becomes too intense. So if you needed to, you could put your hands on the mat and push yourself up out of the stretch when it becomes too hard for your body to tolerate. We don't wanna be experiencing pain. Sensation is not pain. Pain is a type of sensation, right? But it's sometimes challenging in some of these practices to know the difference, right? We don't want to feel pain. But that said, sometimes the sensation of a, of a deep stretch can feel a little intense. Do your best to tolerate when it's too much. Pull back. And then just try to make sure you can breathe smoothly the whole time. Come on up gently out of your pose and we're gonna move to saddle, which starts off like Virasana with the knees together and the feet a little bit wide and then sit your hips down between the feet. If your hips don't make it to the floor here, please let yourself sit up on a block or it could be a book or a folded up blanket so that you're actually able to rest your sit bones somewhere. This might be your pose where you're just letting yourself sit. This is gonna probably work on things like ankles and knees. But if you wanna go further into the pose, you can start to walk your hands back, maybe coming to forearms and puff your chest up. You could do this version even if you are sitting on a book or a block. If you wanna lay fully back, 
I encourage doing that only if your sit bones are actually flat, because otherwise it creates a really weird shape if you were to try to lay down but your hips were lifted up. So if your sit bones are really down, if your hips are completely resting on the ground, then you can allow yourself to lengthen out fully. And then just, again, release your weight to the floor and allow the pose to happen to you. Now, as you come out of your poses, come up slowly, gently, easily, mindfully. Let's move to tabletop, and we're going to do a little bit of cat-cow stretching here. So you can certainly follow the breath like we would classically one-to-one. -one. Inhale, head and tail lift, chest and belly drop into cow. Exhale, round the back, arch the spine into cat. However, if you feel like you'd like to hold one of these poses for a little bit longer, for a few breaths, feel free. And then you could hold the other for a few breaths. So take this where you'd like to go with it, but this is what we'll spend the next minute or so doing. Now, let's step the right foot to the top of the mat. We're gonna to come to dragon pose, which is really a low lunge. We wanna have the right knee over the ankle and then the left knee stays on the ground behind us. Now, a little different than a low lunge is we're actually gonna turn the right toes out and maybe walk that right foot a little to the side so that there's room inside that knee to drop the shoulder. You could be on your hands here, or some of you might be able to rest on your forearms, coming down a little closer to the ground. This right knee might drop slightly to the side, but we don't want it to drop too dramatically. Basically, we wanna kinda of keep the alignment of knee, ankle, toes, but allow your upper body to sink. You can let your head hang and just breathe here.
carefully bringing yourself up and we're just gonna switch to the other side. So step your left foot forward, knee over ankle, right knee stays down, walk your left foot slightly out, bring the hands down, maybe lower to forearms. So obviously in a yin practice, holds are a little longer than maybe in just like a classic hatha or even vinyasa class. We're holding, I think in this practice, some of our holds are gonna be three minutes, but in yin, sometimes holds are up to five minutes. So we really can just kind of slow down and let go. I'll also try to give you a little bit of quiet time after I guide you into the pose so that you can just sort of be in stillness with your thoughts with your breath. Some people even choose to use a mantra so you can incorporate that if you like. All right, let's move to Sphinx Pose. So move that left leg back to join the right. Allow your hips to lower to the mat <clears throat> and start setting up with elbows under shoulders and forearms out in front of you. The chest just lifts up a little bit. Legs are relaxed behind you. So you can stay here or, and I'm gonna slide a little bit back on my mat so my hands are still on my mat. Um, if you want to, spread your fingers and root your hands into your mat and just straighten up the arms. And this is seal pose. Now, it's a little different than like a cobra pose. The arms are pretty straight, but they're at this diagonal. And then the chest just kind of droops down between the shoulders. You can also let your head drop if you'd like. If you want to go deeper, you can walk the hands in closer so that the arms are actively engaged in propping you up. But really, we're trying to let that upper body relax down in the space here.
All right, let's move to downward facing dog. So find your way, hands still rooted into the mat. Tuck your toes, lift your knees and hips, move the heart back, let the head hang. If you want to, you might take a few moments to pedal out the feet and warm up the legs a little bit. But, you know, down dog isn't really a classic yin yoga pose, but we can practice it sort of in a yin way, if that makes sense, by finding what do we need to engage to keep the alignment of pose, and then where can we find stillness and rest within it. So yes, the arms are gonna be working here, but see if you can also find a lot of ease in the pose. There is a little bit of fluidity that happens through the breath. That does move our body subtly each time we inhale and exhale. But otherwise, let's aim for stillness. Now staying in down dog with the upper body, let's take the right leg up for a down dog split. Feel free to bend the knee, pointing the knee towards the sky. Keep the shoulders level, though the hips might feel like they're twisting. And I know this is a fair amount of work in the arms from the poses we came from, so continue to stabilize. If you need to drop to your knees for child's pose, that is absolutely okay as well. Now we're gonna step the right foot forward. And for our next pose, we're actually gonna to come to a high lunge. So we are coming to our feet now. Back leg stays extended, front knee over the ankle. Just take the arms up, steady your gaze. We'll be holding standing poses for about a minute, which isn't terribly long, but it is longer than we often hold in like a flow class where we're maybe just doing about five breaths. So just do your best here to continue to find the stillness within the alignment. Now let's move to triangle pose, trikonasana. So adjust the back foot so the heel is down and the arch lines up with the front heel. Straighten the front leg and shift the upper body. Sides of the torso stay long, arms are vertical. Maybe turn your head, look up to your lifted thumb.
Now, on an inhale, come on up and stretch back, and then we're gonna float into a standing split on the right foot. So fingertips ahead of your toes, left leg lifts high, fold your body towards your standing leg. Now, top of the mat, chair pose, Utkatasana. Let the feet come together, bend the knees over the toes, sink the hips down, but let the upper body come up, creating that zigzag shape. Lift the toes if you need to. Make sure you're not taking the weight too far forward. Bring it back towards your heels. And now we're gonna to step to plank pose. So plant your palms and walk the feet back. And we're gonna to try to hold plank for about a minute here. If this is, you know, more than your body wants, you can always lower knees to the floor for a modified version. Or even if you just need to take a break, you can always drop to child's pose. I know a minute sounds like such a short amount of time, but in plank, it seems like forever. <laughs> you can do it. Breathe. Now, back to down dog. So root the hands down, lift the hips up, heart back. Left side, down dog split. Take that left leg up, open the hip, bend the knee. Twist the low body. Try to keep the shoulders level.
step that left foot forward. Use your hand to help you if you need to. Take yourself to your high lunge or crescent pose on the second side. Front knee bent deeply, hips sink down, back leg is straight and strong, so we're actually engaging the muscles of the back leg, and then you can push through the back heel. Pull navel in if you're able to, so that we're not getting a really big back bend in the torso here, but there's a little bit of like Uddiyana Bandha core engagement if you're able to. Now, triangle pose on the left. So adjust your back foot, straighten the front leg. With the arms out, shift the hips back, tuck the left hip in, arms vertical. Look up towards your lifted thumb and lean the head and shoulders back. Now come on up, stretch back on an inhale, and then we're going into standing split on the left leg. Fingertips to the floor, right leg into the air. Now, just let your right foot come to join the left, feet hip distance, top of the mat, dangling. Maybe holding opposite elbows here. Knees can be soft, upper body just hangs.
And then release your elbows if you have them. Bend your knees. Let's roll up to standing. Come up nice and easy. Take the shoulders back and down. And we're gonna step out wide for Prasrita Padottanasana. So a wide-legged standing forward fold. Try to parallel your feet and then just let the upper body hang down. You can plant the hands between your feet. Let your head hang as well. Shift your weight forward toward the balls of the feet. Breathe. Okay, so take your time coming up. We're gonna turn the right toes open and the left toes slightly in that direction. Inhale, reach the arms out and up. We're gonna move to warrior two. So on an exhale, turn the palms out, lunge into your right knee, let the arms come down to shoulder height and just look out over those front fingertips. Now, coming up, we're gonna shift over to the left for a side lunge. So turn the left toes out a little, drop the sit bones down, come to your right heel. Press palms as you twist here. Some of you might like to take a bind, wrapping the left arm around the left knee and then the right arm comes back. Turn your chest towards the ceiling. All right, now we're gonna go back into a couple more yin stretches. So drop your right sit bone to the floor, tuck the sole of the left foot in for a half butterfly here. So letting your body angle towards the right leg, but relax that right leg completely. Just allow yourself to fold towards it. And you might need to adjust like how far open your knee is here. Find the position where you can really just relax and let go into this single leg stretch.
Okay, so coming up out of your fold. Now we're gonna keep the left knee bent and we're gonna kind of move it all the way around and we're moving towards swan, which is like a pigeon stretch. So let your left knee come all the way to that outer corner. Use your right toes to walk your right leg back so you're on the top of the right thigh. And then if you want to, you might shift your shin a little further forward, but then make sure you're not sitting on your left hip. So then from here, we're just gonna fold down, and this is um, in yin, it's swan, it's sleeping swan as we fold down, but it is a nice hip opener for that left side. Allow yourself to just sink down here. Let go while you breathe. Okay, so come on up. And we're gonna take a little time just to transition now. So returning to downward facing dog. If you wanna shake your left leg out, you might do that. <laughs> Kick through the heel if you like. Otherwise, just take a couple of resting breaths here in down dog. <laughs> And then walking the feet forward back to the top of the mat. Come back to dangling for a moment. And then let's bend the knees, rolling up to standing, shoulders back. All right, so stepping out wide, let's go into another variation of prostrita. And this one, we're gonna add in our shoulder stretch. So let your hands clasp together behind your back if you're able to, shoulder blades together. Feet are still parallel, and now we can let the chest lead as we fold. Keep your shoulder blades tucked onto your back, but you can let the arms now begin to lean overhead to stretch in the shoulder area. Shift your weight forward toward the balls of the feet. Let your head hang. And then rooting down with the feet, come on up nice and easy. Let's do our poses and stretches to the left. So turn the left toes open, turn the right toes slightly left. Inhale, reach the arms out and up. Exhale, flip the palms down, lunge into the left knee for warrior two. Find your alignment, make sure your front knee is over your ankle. Your shoulders should stay stacked right up above the hips and just gaze out over your fingertips.
Now, moving to the side lunge, the other direction. So adjust your feet. The right toes turn out kind of to a diagonal. Lunge into that right knee. Come onto your left heel. And then elbow in side knee, press palms, or take your bind. Gently turn your heart open towards the ceiling. Might be hard to see for what I'm doing, but my left hip is up off the ground, so I'm, it's kind of like in a squat on this one right leg. Now, letting go of your bind and your twist, allow the left hip to come to rest on the floor. And then we're gonna take our half butterfly, so tuck the sole of the right foot up by the inner left thigh. And then instead of flexing this foot like we would, like if we were doing a single leg stretch that's more muscle engaging, we're gonna try to keep the leg really soft and loose. Angle your body towards that left leg and just fold down. Stay with your breath. And come on up. And we're gonna move to the hip opener now for that right leg. So keep your right knee bent and just start to swing it around. Let it point to the opposite corner of your mat. Use your left toes to walk your left leg back. Now, once you're here, if you want to, you can roll to your right hip for a second. Bring your right shin further forward, but then come back up off that right hip so that you're on the top of the left thigh and then fold deeply. Find your pose, stay and breathe.
All right, take your time coming up. Again, plant your palms. Find your way back to down dog to just take a little bit of a rest. If you'd like to shake your right leg out, that might feel good as well. When you're ready, walk the feet forward. And let's come down to sit bones. And we're gonna take a boat pose here, Navasana. So help yourself in by reaching your hands behind your thighs, letting your shoulder blades move to the back, lift your chest, and then just lift your shins, level them out with the floor, keep the gaze upright. Now you can stay here with hands behind thighs if you like, or if you feel like the core is able to stabilize you, release the hands, keep the shape. Now lower your feet. Let's lower the upper body down. And we're gonna come into a held bridge pose. Now, if you would like to take a supported bridge here, you could grab a block. And as you lift your hips up off the ground, you could slide that block to the highest setting you're able to right underneath your, the base of your tailbone. So the very low part of your sit bone, of your, um, yeah, of your spine. Now, if you don't have the block, that's okay too. Roll the shoulders underneath you so that those are gonna give you a little extra support and maybe interlace fingers. So your arms are almost like a stand and then your feet are there as well. So I like to think of this pose sometimes as much as it, yes, it's a back bend, but it's also a stretch for the front of the body. So allow yourself to kind of feel that extension all the way from your neck to your knees. Now, lower your spine down, trying to come down nice and easily one vertebra at a time until at last the hips come down to the mat. Happy baby pose. Bend the knees, bring them by the sides of the chest, and then send your shins towards the ceiling so that they feel like vertical. If you can grab the outer feet, go ahead and do so. If those feet are out of reach for you, your hands could also just be on the backs of your, like under your, like by your hamstrings here. And the weight of the hands is gonna help to draw your legs in a little closer. So whether they're on the feet or the knees, we're not pulling, we're just letting the weight of the hands add to grab 
gravity's pull. You can also let your shoulders relax. Head is down. Breathe here. Letting go of your feet. Let the heels come kind of by your hips, knees into the chest. We're just gonna take a couple supine twists, one one direction, one the other. So you can let your arms come out like cactus arms. Let your knees drop to the right. Turn your head back to the left. And then you can keep the arms where they are if you want to, or some of you might enjoy bringing your right hand to the, like the upper left leg, just again to add a little bit of weight, a little bit of encouragement for those knees to drop one way, and then your head and shoulder go the other way. Time to change to the other side. Bring your knees back through center. Let them easily fall to the left. And you should see if you can kind of keep the legs tucked up by your upper body. And then turn your head to the right. Let your arms be in this goalpost or cactus shape. Or your left hand might come to rest on your right leg as you twist your body.
and coming out of the twist to this direction. All right, yogis, it is time for Shavasana. <laughs> so start to walk the feet out here. For anyone who's got like any low back issues, you might start with this constructive rest position with the soles of the feet on the floor and the knees bent. That can be a lot gentler on the low back. But if your low back's feeling good, let your legs lengthen out. One of the things I love to do in prepping for Shavasana is lift the chest up, create a little space so you can actually tuck your shoulder blades and flatten them out on the ground. It allows the chest to broaden and the rest to feel just a little more grounded. Let your arms come out now slightly away from the sides with the palms up. Head should be able to rest on the floor with the nose still pointing towards the ceiling. So if you need to adjust, you know, a ponytail that's in the back of your head or anything, do that now. And then everything just lets go. So this is like true yin coming to total stillness. Let the ground hold you up and allow your body to give in. Enjoy this last piece of your practice. Stay in Shavasana as long as you like. You can stay there five minutes, 10 minutes, even longer. Allow your body to just let go. I'm gonna end the practice with you from here. And if you'd like to join me, you might choose to make your way up to a seated cross-legged position, but otherwise do this in your own way, in your own time. The light in me recognizes and honors the light in you, wherever you are. Thank you so very much for joining me today and sharing in this practice. Namaste. If you did like today's practice, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I hope you'll join me. I actually haven't taught a yin style class in a while, but I do have a bunch of them already up on my channel. So if this is your thing, please look for my yin playlist. I also teach a lot of minimal cues, vinyasa style classes. So I do try to focus on intermediate level practices that you can do right at home. Let me know if you have any requests for classes as I continue to make them in the future. That's all for now. Again, I hope you'll join me soon. Namaste. Bye-bye.